The pyramids were made from stone. No brick was used in a pyramid ever. The early tombs of the uh, pharaohs were mud brick. And if you take a lot of the walls and a lot of the cities, those mud bricks are still there. But this, these were built with granite and limestone. If it was used for granite, it had to come 500 miles away. The limestone they could get locally. So, that's a good question. Um, and they took years to build. 30,000 people would take to build them. Alright, the next thing you really should see is Abel Symbol. This was a temple built by Ramses II along the Nile River. Everybody have that? <laughs> and he built it in 1264 BC for one reason and one reason only. It was a temple to him and his wife and the gods. But he built it on the river banks. So when people came into Egypt, they saw that, because it was out in the middle of nowhere, they saw the bank of the Nile River. This is Egypt, and I am Pharaoh. Don't mess with me. That's the only reason it was built. There's no housing out there, there's no villages out there. And this was the this was Addison is the temple <laughs> that was filled with sand that Belzini. This was all covered with sand. He cleaned it out. It still stands today. However, not in the same place. When they built the Aswa Dam in what year was that? Sixties. And I saw something there, right? Nineteen sixty-eight. They were building a reservoir and the end of it. This would have covered and gone forever. And the, the nations of the world got together and said, well, let's take it apart, statue by statue, take the insides out. We can't reproduce the mountain because inside this is a long temple that goes maybe back hundreds of feet. So they they took another part of that mountain and they cut it open and they put false ceilings, false walls, just like the original, put the original statues in. Then these statues were taken, sawed in pieces and put together. And that stands today in a different location. Now this picture is before that happened. This picture, let me see. Well, it's relocated. This may, this may or may not have been because it looks just like that today. You cannot tell. But if, they, if, if the world had not gotten together and done this, and the world paid for it, we would have not had this great mind. On, on this map, right at the beginning of your map, yes. where would that have been located? Uh, in Memphis, I think? No, let me think. That's a good symbol. Oh, thanks. Duh. Thanks, I see it. I see it? Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, it cost millions yes. to do this. America. Spent the most with Britain and France and Italy spending with their own. But the Egyptian government never won that. Because I'm like, yes. And when you said there were like 30,000 people working to build everything, the pyramids, etc., etc., 
How are they fed? I mean, to feed we're going to cover that. That's a very, very good question, and you're going to see the villages where they live. That's probably one of the best questions. <laughs> Now we'll get into the Gaza Plateau and the pyramids and the stuff that we all know about. Turn next page, you will see a statue that looks like this. That is the Pharaoh Khafu. He reigned from 2500 to 2500 BC. And he built the Great Pyramid. This is the only known statue of him, and it's four inches high, made of ivory, and it's in the museum. There are no big statues, there's no monuments, there's no papyrus, there's nothing. This was not a nice man. He was greedy, and he, when he built, the first pyramid that he put on. He was not a funny guy to work for. Is that in Cairo Museum or British Museum? Well, British well, or Cairo? The, uh, that's, in the, that's in the museum in Cairo. My friend Danny said, who was a friend of our family, he said, Eddie, I saw it. He said, you have to get it like this. He said, it's a tiny little thing. He said, you'd love it with your collection, but you couldn't afford it. There's nothing else. Taking on all the other pharaohs, Tutankhamun, Nefertiri, uh, Tutmosis, uh, they all had gigantic nothing in this guy. Zilch, and his son built the next big pyramid, and his grandson built the next one. Now, to give you an idea of how big this pyramid is, there was a man recently who did something illegal. He climbed the Great Pyramid and took photographs. Now, when you go to the top of this museum, if you go to the next page, you see where it says, this is the page that shows you that. Okay? That is the Great Pyramid of Khufu, the biggest building on Earth for over 4,000 years. Its height is 480 feet. Its sides are 750 feet to the west, 755 feet to the north, 755 feet to the east, and 756 feet to the south. Not by a foot. If you took the Great Pyramid and you moved it to New York City today, it would be six square blocks. And this is also limestone. Pardon? This is also well, limestone. Well, that's we're going to get into that because there's a new theory coming out. It's granite and limestone and something else they just they think they just discovered. Okay. So Khufu wanted to build the biggest pyramid ever built to himself. Had an ego the size of New York City. And he wanted this built in his lifetime. So what he did was he employed workers and and if you look to the right of that pyramid, you can see the, see the village, the, the, the little buildings? Mm -hmm. That's the village where the workmen lived for 30 years. They had grand fasciers, they had bakers, they had their own homes, they had shoemakers, beer makers. And that was a life to these people. They were not treated as slaves. This is what they went to work every day, and one guy would be a carver, a stone carver. One guy would be the mathematician who figured out things. The next guy would be the guy that painted it. The next guy would be the guy that polished the stone. And it was all set up in a community. They lived where they worked. They were fed. He paid for the food. 
they had a happy life. I mean, they were not beaded and starved and treated badly. And it took, he wanted this built when he was still alive. And they're not sure it took 30, 30 years. Now, there was a theory, let me get this. Alexis brought this. I heard. This is, this is, this, let's picture this as the Great Pyramid. They thought originally that they, would, they had a road to, to go up and take all the stones up. The road would have had a bed a mile. No way could they do that. So then the theory came out, well, what they did was they would put ramps around it and go up and put the stones. And they thought that the whole thing was made of granite. Now, only the interior, and we'll cover that interior, is granite. The grand, the grand hallway, the tomb itself, the granite sar sarcophagus, everything is granite. The outside, <clears throat> limestone. Covered at one time in pure, if you look at the picture, you see the top? <laughs> where, what, that was the white limestone that they could not get a hold of when they destroyed this thing. The very top of this was a special stone to the point where this, that's gone. That top is gone. It still looks pointed, but it's gone because it was made out of a special stone. They didn't know what it was, and it was encased in gold. Mm -hmm. So that was there, and they're saying if, if they did this, they had to build around it and around it and around it. Recently, a famous archaeologist, world class, who has been on the Gasabato working for 35 years, got the idea as he would buy one of the smaller pyramids. He looked, he saw rubble outside the pyramid. He said, wait a minute, this can't be solid. There's 250 million blocks, they think, in this. It's, they, can, they cannot have done it that way. Why would you need a building of solid rock? So his idea was, they built the interior of the limestone, I mean of the granite, built the hallways, and then around it, they built the ramps with rubble. Cut stones and things, and the ramps would go up, and they'd fill it up with rubble. Now the ramp would go up, then. and that's how they got, they think, they built it from the inside out. This is a theory that to me was like a light bulb. Makes a lot of sense. And then they would cover it with these big blocks of the steps, which we'll see. Mm -hmm. And then they covered those steps with white limestone so it was perfectly smooth, highly polished. How could someone that. climb that? Pardon? How could someone climb it? Climb it? Yeah, you said. That well, the blocks. You I have a picture of something. Where is it? I got a million pictures here. Hold on. That's how they climbed it. This is the man who recently climbed the Great Pyramid, took pictures illegally from the top. So it shows you the pyramid from the very top and the other pyramids in the area as well as the rocks. I'm going to pass this out, let you take a look at it, and kind of stretch your legs out of the way. So, take a look at that. That's just the blocks. How they climb. Well, see, I was thinking that you have a climb to damage the pyramid. Well, you're right. Because they had to use picks. You're right. <clears throat> and we're going to cover that too. That was not damaged until the 11th century. 80. But they would put these blocks up, yeah, they, they put these blocks up, they built it up, and then they'd use the blocks 
climb up and put the white limestone. The big white limestone, same size, would be fit in to that spot and the front highly polished. So it was like steps. They're still there. The white limestone is gone. You can still get to the top by climbing up this way till about here with, a, with the white limestone that is left has marks in it and the top is flat. You're not allowed to go up it. And these pictures that I just sent out is the man that did it. It's phenomenal. Now they want to process it. You should be up there. Well, that is my next question. <laughs> what? What did they do to them? <laughs> Nothing. So yeah, but if, if it's up there, they bought the pictures. If it's up there, <laughs> you all seen on television the head of the, Egy the Egyptian. He's, he's all the time that Swami or something. Where's the hat? And he's, 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 he's Egyptology. Not one of my favorites. Arrogant and very male shamanist. Oh, oh, pain in the ass. On the <laughs> now, the archaeologist who figured that this is filled with rubble can prove it. Because all he has to do is drill in 14 feet. If he drills in 14 feet, he's not going to run into solid rock. He's going to run into rubble. They will not let him drill. Now, what is so wrong about taking a hole and drilling it in and proving them wrong. Because it wasn't their idea. Well, it blows the myth, too. So, so the, the actual build a false wall outside, fill it up, and then build it up. Absolutely. Over it. Yeah, but that makes more sense than the road and going in. Yeah. And he said, I've, I've taken smaller pyramids and there, there's rubble in them. Why not this one? And we'll end it. And he's going to continue to fight it and until the present political situation at the Cairo Museum and, and he, this guy gets gone. Maybe they'll do it someday. Because this is something to behold. Who's, has anybody seen this? It's, it, it's, it takes you, if you walked around it, we decided to take a walk. It took 20 minutes to walk around it. Corresponding to the Mexican time period that they built. Oh, you mean the Mexican pyramids and things? I don't know a whole lot about that. For some reason, the Mayans and the Aztecs, and they, that was not one of my periods of interest. Now, I could bluff and say, no, I, I, I know they were there. Lots of, I, I, I absolutely never studied them. Show no mm -hmm. So that I can answer. Well, I'll be interested in what happens politically in Egypt. Oh! Because of these wonderful, I mean, you know, ISIS has already knocked down some wonderful. Oh, Palmyra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there is, there is so much more to be discovered. Yeah. We have only scratched the surface. For 1822, is when they broke the code. That's 200 years? No, quite 200 years. Before that, we knew nothing. Now we can read the language. Mm -hmm. We're finding papyrus. They're putting it together to make the sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, is, this could be a... I hope that King Tut tomb, I don't think we'll see it in my lifetime, will be insignificant in the future finds. If they find then maybe if they find her tomb, who? Nefertiti? I'm going to cover that. I don't, I, I'm going to cover that at length because I've been, I've been doing research with everybody I can think of on that. There's a lot of pros and cons to that. And we'll get into her, Akhenaten, and the father, and then Tuck. There's a lot to cover today. Well, anyway, thank you, Alexis. This was a tremendous uh, learning tool to use. You will get it back. <laughs> All right. Here's one of my favorite. I am no grants. This is the. This is the great here. John, not well done, but understand. All right. Let's begin. This 
is a black. This is what the tomb looked like. Now, if you take the top, which was gold, the stone, which is missing. But you'll see the entrance, you go up the king's chamber, the queen's chamber, which is the, she was never buried there, as far as I know. But Kafu was buried there, because his sarcophagus is still there, red granite, broken, but still there. Then there was the Grand Gallery, which is the one you walk up. It's all solid granite. And then see there was what they call the escape shafts. Uh, and you see where I have number two, these lines drawing up to the top. Let me show you something. You're not more yet, are you? <laughs> Anybody yet? <laughs> a number of years ago, somebody got the idea of why do you need air shafts in a tomb? You know. So some bright man and women got together and took a robot. That's the robot. Wally mm -hmm. robot that up there. Maybe you need the air shafts for the workers. No, because you had the entrance coming in. You didn't need the air shafts. Because it was not closed. It hadn't, it hadn't sealed the tomb yet. Do you think it was because all these oils and things that they used to embalm the no. bodies with would explode if they... No. We'll cover the, that. We're going to cover... Uh, The, 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 that's, that was, that's a whole new thing. Yeah. You're looking at the <laughs> Yeah, this, this shafts would go up, and they set this little machine up. And that machine, when it got, it, would, it, would, it went straight up on the left side, straight up on the right side, and it pointed to two constellations. And those constellations, I put the little blue dots, mm -hmm. were the constellation where the king was supposed to spend, be spending his spare time when he left the pyramid at night. <laughs> They are perfectly, perfectly straight. No bends, no curves. Perfect. And that was just discovered a number of years ago. <clears throat> Had no idea they thought it was it. You don't need an air shaft that big to bring air when you're going to seal the tomb solid. And they never had to seal it in the beginning because it always had the openings to go in. Ed? Yes? When we did the um, lecture on Rome, there are a lot of things that Romans did, what Romans did, that were beneficial to the rest of the world. You know, the sanitation. Yes. Um, various uh, the aqueduct, things of this type. Um, what did the Egyptians leave us? Mathematics? Oh, you, here we go, um, yes. They okay, were. because if, if you're going to try and look at a constellation from the ground and you're inside, mm -hmm. you've got to be very precise to catch that constellation. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the Earth is moving. Mm -hmm. Does the constellation stay in the same place, Wally? same relative place. <laughs> I anticipated your question. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, I haven't talked yet about this. That's just you know. Yes, they were probably the best mathematicians in the world. Mathematics. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love his general personality. You yeah, better give it to me. I better be boy good enough. Yes, they were the finest mathematicians because everything, they came up with the theory that, they, oh, these were the guys that invented it. They left the world with the greatest mathematics. Yeah. Because just the um, archaeological or architectural mathematics is amazing. Everything fits like a glove. Yeah. I mean, you, you take that pyramid, it's off one foot. Our homes are not that perfect. <laughs> you went outside measure this house, I bet it's off that. <laughs> They left the world 
with, they, if they invented mathematics, and they had all of the great mathematic formulas, and it was all, they had the records. And where was it kept? The yeah. library mm -hmm. of Alexandria, which mm -hmm. Caesar destroyed. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we had it all. Mm -hmm. Yes, the, they were the inventors of mathematics, period. What else did they leave us? Raleigh? <laughs> are, we, are we losing too many there? No, they haven't fallen down yet. I was going to ask you about this. Lift. Got it? Up, up. No, oh, you were too low. No. no okay, mm. there. You got, you got one over hole there. You need another one. Was this our medicine? Yes. They were the first really nation to come up with physicians, with assistants, and schools of medicine. They taught medicine. They were the ones that actually invented the couch. The, the, remember I told you about the cataracts? They started it. In Hotel, the, the, the Grand Vizier who built the Step Pyramid was the father of medicine. Treated, wrote down, and we have it, all the diseases that he treated. And they were clean, they had assistants, they had people to say prayers for them, and they were treated with kindness, respect, they had great medicines, they did surgery. Bingo. If you wanted to be if you wanted to be sick now in Egypt or then, I would take that. Because you do not want to get sick. Uh, the Lupos, you have been to Egypt. You do not want to be ill and go to an Egyptian hospital, correct? Right. Back then, yeah, they came to the house, they treated you, there was none of this gout. They were men and women, men, highly professional. Highly skilled and took great pride. They washed their instruments, they cleansed, cleansed them, and they invented a lot of medicines that are still used to somewhat today. Good question. All right, I think it's a tomb. When Khufu built the Great Pyramid, and it was discovered, this has been gone through so many times. In 1954, they discovered outside of having a, this large boat. You see the boat? Mm -hmm. That was the boat built by Khufu and used by him to bring his body up the Nile to the got the plateau. And after, after the king's body was taken off, it's 143 feet long, 19 feet wide, and it was put with 1,224 pieces, taken apart, put in the ground, and covered. And it was not discovered until 1954. They put it together, it fits, every joint fits, and and they put it together with the hemp that they used in those days. Not the biggest, but that is probably also the boat he used during his lifetime to go up and down the Nile. Something else they just discovered. Not proven yet, but recently uh, an Egyptologist said, I wonder if they could have had a big reel to use as a saw, because they did have copper saws, they had copper tools. They said, well, if we found, a, if they had a wheel that they could use as a saw that would run the saw, it would have to be 30 feet in diameter. Well, uh, two years ago, they remembered that they found a trench right outside, not far from the boat. And that trench 
39 feet long, X amount of feet wide, and if they put a 30 foot wheel, it would be perfect. They have no idea why the trench was there because when they found it, they excavated and took everything out. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying that trench could have been the wheel used to cut the stone. Mm -hmm. So they say, if we find another trench in another period, we're going to go in and excavate the trench. That just happened. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're saying, look at the things we've done in haste mm -hmm. instead of taking our time. Mm -hmm. Now, the final picture is the picture, this is right here, of the pyramids as they appear in the day. Mm -hmm. in you see the, the pyramids, the father, the son, and the kids? Mm -hmm. And then you see the dock. Mm -hmm. That was the Nile River, and right in the back of that dock is the Sphinx. The Nile came right up to that plateau. That Nile River has moved nine miles away. So during the period, the plateau was lush, green, a place to go on the weekend. He wanted to go out and visit the king. He wanted to go out and visit the queens, etc. He could go right across the river. Sunday picnic. The landscape has changed because of the weather has changed. And most people don't realize. I'd say it's seven miles. I want to go to seven miles. Okay, my friends, now we're going to get in the King Cup. And do you think it was a lot cooler than today? Because when we went to Abu Simba, it was 130 degrees, and I can't imagine working and doing much work. Well, the weather was cooler, they think. And when they went to work, they wore white loincloths, no headgear, and water boys bringing water up. And they didn't, when it was hot, it wasn't as hot as it is today. There, there has been a change in the weather. Plus, it was, if, if there's greener, you know that, it's not as hot. Was it humid? Yes. Was it the hot desert? Yes. But how do the Africans work in Africa? How do the South Americans work in the jungle? Mm -hmm. Hot. Mm -hmm. And you know, how do we work out here in the South? I see one more cockroach, one more tree. <laughs> I mean, it's hot down here. But that's a good question. And yet the weather has pattern has changed over the century and gotten hotter. Yeah, but they still have their rainy season, don't they? Oh, yeah, they still get it. You know, they right. still get and they still get the valley flooding. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, we just, look what we just went through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the rains, yes, they'll always have that rainy period because that's the Nile, the floods that has given them four centuries, four thousand centuries of fertile ground, four thousand years. They ate well. Uh, the average, the average, here's a picture of the average Egyptian home. Well, we've got, we got more room? Oh, sure. It ain't deep enough that. yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you sat there, Wally. <laughs> um, so they love me at mailbox. Here he comes again. <laughs> Where did you get all these wonderful um, books? Books. The, books. Oh, that did, I you, have in my did you just copy it? I copied it and opened a page and copied okay. it. And it yeah. Wow. This is the average Egyptian home of the middle class. Not the poor, not the real rich. Well, so they were nice. They had rooms, kitchens. Mm -hmm. Roof to live off of. They lived a very comfortable life. I mean, who wouldn't be happier with them? Even basements. Well, yes. And they still are finding, when they find these homes, they are still finding the charcoals of different woods. Mm -hmm. Woods they were burning from other parts of the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. 
So they imported an awful lot. They were warriors, yes, who didn't want to mess with them because they didn't lose many battles. If you went to war against Egypt, you were going to lose. They didn't lose many. And they and when they con when they con they didn't want to conquer lands, they went out to stop people coming into them. There is. There were the Hittites. Everybody heard of the Hittites. And Ramses had he hated the Hittites because they had they had beaten his father Sebi the first of the battle. So when Ramses was a young king, he decided to go after the Hittites. I'm sick of these guys, he's young, virile. So he rides up to their land with his chariots and his army. But he makes some tactical mistakes. He splits the army and goes, but he still wins the battle. So he doesn't win anything, he doesn't lose anything, he beats the Hittites. Finally, Ramses and the Hittites get together and they have the first world ever piece of paper. Written in stone, you can see the stone, the Cairo Museum. I won't go to war with you, you don't go to war with me. What, do you, what would we call that today? An agreement of treaty. 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 The first treaty ever the Egyptians did. Hey, look at you keep coming down here. And we beat you. You want to go, hey, let's sign it. And they have that stone in the Cairo Museum. Well, I don't know. I jump in the gun, but what happened? This wonderful civilization. I mean, you know what happened to the Romans. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, well, I, I tell you what happened. In breeding, there were, and I'll, I'll discuss that when I get into it. In breeding, trying to stay with the blood within the blood, emperors taken up, pharaohs taken over who were incompetent, and time and time and on, finally Alexander and. and, and um. his, takes over Egypt and he puts the Ptolemies in charge, not the Egyptians. So the, it just, over the years, it just started to decline. And the last 800 years, they were Greeks running. They had become Egyptians, but they're not Egyptians. So it's just a, no civilization has ever lasted. We're 200, what are we, 250 years old? Look at us now. We have all the technology in the world. We're about to blow each other up. Hey, you, you stick to your side of the wall. I'll stick to my side of the wall. These were these people lasted four thousand years. We will never see four thousand. I guarantee you that. I know I won't. <laughs> um, before I get into this, let me get into a little bit of the mummification because that process. Is so critical. Wally? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do do you, Wally? Who knows? I'm glad I did these. Yeah, I'm glad oh, I did yeah, too. they've been marvelous. Oh, wow. I really can't see them. Yes, I did. I'm going to show you. Well, always it's something. But they had a, uh, a real consciousness of the future and oh, yes. preserving yes. their civilization. They did. The Egyptians believed in two main things, the present life and the after life. And the priests and the pharaohs sold that bill of goods to them. Boom. If you want to live a life, you must prepare yourself for the next life. The next life is going to be with the same Pharaoh that you are living with today, and you had to be pure, and you had to be mummified. You needed your body. So what they did, if you were rich, wealthy, a king, a king, a queen, a priest, you went for the embalming. 70 days to a mama body. Mm -hmm. 
First thing they do is they would wash the body in oils, clean it, wash it, clean it. Then they would take a small knife, make an incision right here, and take out every organ of the body. That could deteriorate. The liver, the heart, the lungs, the spleen, the small intestine, the large intestine, the ascending nicole, the transverse colon. The, everything was taken out. Everything. Then they went into the brain, because what? The brain will, will deteriorate. So they went in with a hook. They just found one not too long ago in, on one of the bodies that they left. A small hook about this big with a round, with a little screen. They would go up, oh. Oh. Go through, go through, and slowly pick out the brain. Every single thing. Because the brain will happen, deteriorate. So they would take out all the organs, then they would purify those organs, wash them, clean them, oil them, and put them in canopic jars. Can you see the jars? Yeah, that's what the organs were. They didn't need them, but they wanted. The only thing they kept was the heart. They embalmed the heart because the heart was the, the key to them. So then they would take the bodies and they would take them and cover them in natron, which is basically salt, and dry them out. That took 40 days to dry those bodies out. 40 days. Then they bring the bodies back, look like shoe leather now, right? Because every bit of moisture is gone. And they would oil them, comb the hair, fix everything on it, and then they would slowly begin to use the living wrappings. Finger, finger, finger. They have found on one person 4,000 square yards of it. 4,000. That's a lot of material, isn't it? Now, if you were rich, you could afford that. What happens if you were middle class? You couldn't afford to buy that. So in every family, they saved every linen shirt, every linen skirt, every loincloth to be used to wrap their bodies in. And they could not, if they could afford to have their bodies, they would do it. If they couldn't afford it, they would wrap the bodies and put them in the sand, because the sand would dry everything out. But you needed your body. After they embalmed the bodies, and that took, again, 70 days, they would put amulets between them, you know, gold, silver, and wrap them. That's what the thieves wanted. Boy, they wanted that, those amulets. So every, if you go to the museums and you see the mummies today, look at them. I mean, their hair is still perfect. And they, I mean, they're 4,000 years old. Now, if you were really, really poor, and you couldn't afford it, you saved your rags. The family saved the rag, and they buried you in the old rags. That was most important, that you would enter the afterlife with the body you had. Why did they save the heart? Because the heart was the soul of the body. And when you supposedly died and went to the afterlife, they took your heart out and they weighed it against the feather. And if the feather was heavier, you didn't pass the test. You were eaten by the alligator and destroyed. So the heart had to be in good shape. When we found the tight ripple, because his heart was not there. Anyway, it was, it was extremely important. These guys made a fortune. Because everybody, there were, I think, four, eight to ten to twenty million bodies that they've already found. Years and years ago, when they were picked, going through Egypt and in the sand, they find the poor, the, the mummies. You know, pure, the, well, guess what they used them for? Take a jig, you know, they used them for fuel in the locomotives. 
I mean, these were not great people. They were you know, little people. They used them, and they did. They still find them today <coughs> in the, the poor people. The rich are still found occasionally in their mud tombs or in wall tombs. But the afterlife was something you didn't want to mess around with. You wanted to make sure that you got there. <coughs> and one of the worst things you could do is when they hated a pharaoh or a ruler, they would destroy the face of the statues. That could make the afterlife tough for them. Oh, they didn't like you. Guess what? You're going to get another chance. Petrified. And they weren't going to be any better off. They still had the pharaoh. They still had all that. But they were alive. And they sold that for years. There was even... Oh, I love this one. They even had... The priests even had classifications of sins. <laughs> they were called infet. And these were sins that the Egyptians could commit. However, you could get it, you could get rid of them. Ah, crimes of culture, blasphemy, stealing from temple offerings or offerings from the dead, defying the purity of the sacred place, crimes of economic nature, tampering, the boundaries of your field, moving over to the neighbor. Exploration of the weak, morals and social failings, lying, committed adultery, ignoring the truth. Kind of sounds like the same things we had today. <laughs> <laughs> However, you could get rid of these. You went to the temple, you made an offering to the priest, he gave you a little statue, your sins were forgiven. And they did it for 4,000. And got away with it. Every temple, 24-7, had a priest on duty. And if you were way out in the country, or way out, he'd be on duty like that night. And they also had priests that were part-time. Because what priest, the priest would be at Karnak or Memphis, where the dough is. Because they ran the country. They were the ones that kept the books, kept the goals. Otherwise, the head guys. The Egyptians had 15 god and goddesses. Here they are. I mean, there's Seth and, oh, so many of them. Then, Tutankhamun's father, Aknot, got the idea that he was going to do away with the gods and have one god be the model of the god. The sun, Aten. So he closed Karnak, Memphis, put the priest out of the work, and moves the main city to what he builds the desert called Armada. I think I have a picture of that. Here's the palace of Armada. So at Naughton, yeah, the swimming pool in the Yes, sir. That's, a, that's the palace. He moved 30,000 people in a, in a year and a half to a new city, built a brick. And he had followers. He and his wife, Nefertiti, became the head of that religion. And the other thing he did was, he, did, he banned all the other religions. The priests, the no, they did not like this guy. And if you turn to his picture, you can see him. He is one ugly soldier. He had an ender, ender, what do you call that, an endocrine disorder, prolix syndrome. He had the Where's the word? Brain. Endocrine. Endocrine. It's like thyroid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he had a wide hips, like a woman, breasts, elongated face, because he was a product of keeping the blood pure. So his parents 
who may be related. Not, not a bad man, but it was going to be his way. And I would. It was his way. You, 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 you. Otten is the guy. There are no more. Builds a town called Amana, which lasted until he died. The day he died, they buried him there, and bingo! Guess who's back in power? The priests are taking over, and he had a, a grand vizier called I, A Y, who was his grand vizier, and I was the guy who was in charge of his son, who was called Tutan Aten. He was named Aten Akad when he was young because he was named after the god Aten. So that is King Tut. His father, they have found out recently, they were never sure, but they always thought Agnaten was the father of Tut. But who was the mother? It wasn't Nefertiri. It wasn't the woman who but they have not found out until recently when another great, smart French Egyptologist started doing studies. They have in the museum, they have King Tut, so they got his DNA. They have Akhenaten, they got his DNA. They match. Who's the mother? They have no idea. Then he remembers when they buried Thutmosis II, who was the grandfather of Akhenaten, in his <coughs> tomb was a sarcophagus with what they call the younger woman. She's right around the corner in the Cairo Museum from Akhenaten. So he says, that could be his mother. So they get permission, they get her DNA, by golly, it's the DNA of King Tut. It was Akhenaten's sister that Tut is a product. So he was born by his aunt. She did not raise him. She died went into obscurity, was never talked about. Nefertiri was the wife of Agnaten. She was probably one of the most beautiful women of all time. You see a picture of her here? That's a statue that was found in the city of Armada by a German Egyptologist around 1890 found in the sand, in the same shape that it's in now. Nothing has been done to that statue except cleaned and dusted. What material? Except what? Cleaned, dusted. Look at, the, look at the complexion, the neck. The eyes are made from rock crystals, one missing, part of the ear is missing and was found in 1912, and it is still in the Berlin Museum. What, what material is it? What's the...? Um, I'm they need a break. Yeah. They need a break? Stand up break, yeah. Yes. They need a break? Yeah. Stand up break? Yeah. Yeah. Stand up break. Yeah. So if you turn the page, there is oh, Tutankhamun's name in hieroglyphics. Get free to have. Do we know how long uh, she lived? How long what? How long she lived? Do we know? No, I don't know that. Okay, go skip the page. Skip the page with the with the skip this page. What? Here it is, please. Oh, you 
Yeah. You all got this? Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this they just three years ago did an autopsy on King Cat. Right, the autopsy. They brought in cat scans and tables. Mm -hmm. This is what King Cat looked like. Oh had the same hips his father had. Had a club foot. Oh you notice the cane? Mm -hmm. Inside his tomb were 133 canes. Oh my he could not walk without a cane, had a club foot, he was never a warrior, he became king at nine and dead at 19. Mm -hmm. oh. Now what killed him? Everybody thought his successor eye hit him in the back of the head, you know. What they found out was he loved to ride churn. Not in battle, because he was not qualified to do it. They loved to ride him. In his tomb, they found six chariots. Mm -hmm. what, they, what they discovered when they did the autopsy was, he was in a chariot. He was riding, and he was thrown over the chariot, landed on the ground. The chariot went over him, crushed his chest. He died of a crushed chest, burst heart. So when they did, when they buried him, it was quick. They did not expect a 19-year-old to die. So he was buried in a tomb in the middle of the Valley of the Kings, not built for him. Somebody important, but not for him. And the next, then they put, then there's the famous gold mask. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, that is not his face. That mask, if you look at, did I, did I do this? You see this right here? Mm -hmm. That face, the ears, the face are not his. That was, that was cut out and a gold face put in, put the face of a woman because mm -hmm. it has large holes for earrings. Men did not wear earrings. So that face is not the face of King Pepper. Mm. Next picture is quick pictures of how they found his tomb. Howard Carter photographed everything. You can see the chariots. You can see the sandals. You can see you can see the next picture, you can see the two black Nubians, you can see the boat, oars. And if you notice everything, it's just thrown in there. This was not organized, put in carefully. It was put together with his used stuff. 5,000 articles. It took two years to empty it because they photographed it and then they examined it. So when you see some of the jewelry, which is nice, the face, which was not his, mm -hmm. a gold coffin, which they don't know, which weighed 200 pounds, could have been him. But he was an insignificant 19 year old that never accomplished anything. Mm -hmm. Did he have children? Had two stillborns, girls that were buried with him. But they must have loved him to bury him, so. No, but every king was loved. I mean, yeah. every pharaoh, yeah. nobody was going to break the line. If you were Pharaoh, you were going to be buried with pomp and So you think the inbreeding process of this district? Yes, he was a product of, uh, of uh, the inbreeding. As was his father, as was one of his grandfathers. Now, when they, when they put him in the tomb, they just shoved things in. Uh, and that, it took two years to empty it because it was the only tomb ever, ever discovered in Egypt that was not looted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And his heart was not in the cavity as it would normally be because it was crushed. It was a canopic jar. And why was he buried in such a hurry? Because his successor was not a member of his family. 
It was the Grand Vizier I A Y, who he was seventy years old. He wanted to be king. This guy put him in the ground. He proclaims himself king, and he wants to marry I's widow, who's nineteen years old. She says no. So I ran as Pharaoh. Six, seven years, okay. Then the guy who was really to be the next Pharaoh was a man called Horemheb, who was the general, and he was the one who was slain in the beginning to follow him. Years later, they put together all the kings in the wall. They purposely leave out Akhenaten, Tutankhamun, and I. They do not exist. Period. So as far as the Egyptians go, when after he died, he was a non-entity. Forgotten about. Now recently, as you all know, they think they have discovered that in a tomb in Tutankhamun's uh, tomb, a wall that possibly beyond that wall is the tomb of Nefertiti. Nefertiti, the, 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 the oh, wife oh, of okay. his father, beautiful woman. They think so. The only way to prove it is going to bring, bring in a radar system to, to take radar pictures of it. And this, it is behind this wall. Oh, wow. wow. Now, this wall has, if you see all the spots, they thought that was mold and disease. What happened was, that wall was painted before the, the plaster had dried. They painted it. That's the mold that could have So they're going to have to cut through that wall to get to the tomb, if it's there. I have a feeling, I kind of want it to be there because I want it to be, hey, yeah. mm -hmm. well, it, it could be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, when will it happen? I don't know. Because they're not going to cut down that wall till they are sure, and they're not going to move through. And who are the figures and why are they wearing those things? They are, that is, Tutankhamun in the middle, and they are a god and goddess on the left. Yeah, exactly. And ladies and gentlemen, the uh, very, very final picture is the tomb, is the chair, the throne of Tutankhamun. When I put that in, I was saying, I hope. And they will find a tomb where the chair is the more beautiful one. So, having not quite finished all my notes, I think it's time probably to find out. And I finish by saying thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Her husband didn't have any other children except two comments. They didn't, Nefertiti and Agnaton did not have children. No. They would have been part of the royal family. Yes. No, Agnaton only had one son, and that was Tutankhamun and Tutankhamun. Because when Tutankhamun became king or pharaoh and he moved back from Amana, he changed his name to fit in with Aten, the god of the gods. He did not practice the Seven of Religion. So he was a 19 year old nobody. Yeah. But the only tomb ever discovered. I hope that this thing in that theory, but it'll be, I don't know when they'll ever let that. When, the, when they start cutting holes in that, taking it down, the Egyptian government's not going to move quickly. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that if that the X-ray that really shows well, that there's something there, I think I don't know. Do that. I mean, I'm no radiologist. I don't know how how much it can show. Yeah. I have a feeling that if they thought it was so, there'd be X-rays. They'd be right there. Yeah, I think so. Too. I mean, so you, I you know, yeah, wait, we're gonna find a tomb so. intact of Nefertiri. Yeah. With untouched. Yeah. That's a big discovery. Yeah, you're right. And I don't think they'll move that. Way.
So now all these wonderful things that are in the British Museum, etc. Haven't the Egyptians tried to get any? Yes, and they still do, and they're not going to get them back. Because yeah, the Jewish okay. Museum is not, if they don't give the Elgin marbles back, yeah, they are right. not going to give the Rosetta Stone back. They could never have. They are not going to give the head. And if it wasn't for the British Museum, yeah, these things would have been destroyed yeah. in private places. Yeah. No, in my opinion, and I don't think they deserve them back. Yeah. Because the Poshas and the Viziers sold them. Yeah. And they're still stealing stuff. Yeah. You wouldn't. I mean, what did they just do recently? They just took. In uh, Turkey or the, the statues or something. Oh. Hey, no, 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 no. If we don't have the museums in the world keeping these things, there wouldn't be. It. So I don't know, and I don't think they should. Give them back, in my opinion. Oh, why did why was Alexandria destroyed? Did was that out of spite? No, Alex. The Library of Alexandria. They thought when when Julius Caesar was in. Uh, Alexandria mm -hmm. with his army, and he was the pharaoh. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the museum. Uh, wasn't that question about me again? What was your reason behind oh, the library. destroying it? Okay. Yeah, when Julius, Julius Caesar, Caesar was there, with whatever her name was, <laughs> yeah, well, he was there with his girlfriend, Cleopatra. 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 Now, Cleopatra's troops tried to storm the palace. Fire broke out, oh. and the museum was burned. Mm -hmm. Now I didn't cover things like the obelisk and how they made them, mm -hmm. and I have stories of that. How they cut them out by stone. And there are, if you if you know what an obelisk is, there are thirteen in Rome, one in the Vatican, there's one in New York, matching one in London. They're twins, and they're in Place de la Concorde. Take time to see it because you'll see the history of it. We've seen that one. And I have pictures of all that, but I just don't have enough time and day to take that care of anything I do. So. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. 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 Pardon? Our next topic. Thank you. Another topic. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what topic yeah. that would yeah. yeah. I mean, do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. Of course we do. I've learned yeah. more from this than I've ever known about Egypt. Well, how about winter tour? I keep pushing winter tour. Furniture. Furniture. Yeah. Furniture. Yeah, I, my favorite topic is not that. It's furniture from Wayne and Mary. Yeah. Queen Anne. Yeah. Yeah. The transition and the transition huh? of antiques or furniture um, designs from England. In the United States. Oh, and the American furniture, which is the best in the world. And guess what happened? On my way up this week, or last week, to Philly. I was stuck at the airport for four hours. You know me. I'm going to start talking. I said, that's this man. He just had a rotator cuff. Has anybody heard of Albert Sachs? The, the best antique store in American furniture yes. ever. Yes. Wrote the book, Better Best. Good, better, best. Good, better, bad. I'm sitting next to his grandson. Oh, oh my God, oh, dear. And the son of Albert, who owned the store, and we become very close. He said, I was the one that moved all the furniture that my dad sold to a winter tour. I was the one that moved the furniture that we sold to the state house, to the White House. He said, my dad came home one day and said, I am not taking a shower for three days. I just spent the afternoon with Jackie Kennedy. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I said, were you involved in the, the, the sale of the, ch the, of the, of the chest that sold for 12 weeks? How to move the chest? I said, what do you do? He said, I'm in radio. Hey, you're in radiology. Your brother's a doctor. You ever go to school? Where's the store? You never had the money to keep it up. Dad sold everything. Oh. It was the finest store ever at America. OK, we've got our subject. Yeah, well, there you go. If why don't we do why don't we do a combination of furniture, art, and music? And, and music and see what those all three look yeah, like in one That's a big one. That's, oh, that's too big. That's Boy, too big. Yeah. 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 I don't think I'm qualified to make sure. I'll tell you what. Da, 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 da. I think furniture would be good because I just got the great books on American furniture. I'm gonna get a copy. I'm going to call Ed 
Sachs, who's going to give me a copy of his father's book. Oh, wow. And I'm going to get the lowdown on who bought the pieces, where they are. Okay. And who's with the real course? I want to go to Winter Tour. I get a prize. I want to get a prize for it. Who was the one? You were the one named Furniture, right? Yeah. Oh, there's the prize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.